So I guess it's time we put the powder coat to the test. We're gonna put Steve's truck back together. I'm very much in between filming videos right now, working on a bunch of different stuff, but in between doing some stuff that you might or might have, maybe you saw it already, I don't know, it's drying behind me. But depending on how these videos come out, this might have been before that one, or the painting, or the bathroom painting, whatever it may be. But we put Steve's truck back together, so I ran down there to help him out. And with the filming and stuff, well, he had people over, so we weren't really down with just kind of talking over the thing and stuff like that, because there was music playing, copyright, you know what I mean, we've been through this before. so. We got to work on putting his truck back together with parts that he powder coated here in shot. And now we're going to finally see and test how they do out in the real conditions of stuff. But there's a long way to go. started putting his truck back together now a big part of this what we had to do was get the axle lined up properly he had a new drive shaft for it and everything else so first things first was to get the components that we need to make sure it sits in the right spot first part that went on the truck was the leaf spring adapter housing holder the suspension brackets the brackets for the leaf springs that's the <laughs> that's the first part that went on and these parts were purchased brand new and what we did was we eliminated the finish that was on it to begin with we took off all the original paint uh, again brand new so there was no pits no scratches no nothing we cleaned it all off we powder coated it and it turned out to be our best part we had done so that gives us the notion that very much depends on what kind of shape your metal's in is going to depend on what kind of look this gets you in the end so those went on first he already had a sway bar bracket on with the blue looks pretty cool because he's got that light blue going on i don't want to say the f word there but ford blue and he's got blue bushings that work with it also and they're a little bit darker so at first he thought maybe it was about the same color and that was to kind of have a uniform look but i honestly think that the two color combo the different blues up against the black looks really good now he put a lot of work in this thing he cleaned out the entire frame he got it right down to metal and then did a rust encapsular because it's an old truck that sees a lot of winters and stuff like that and it's going to see many more and then painted over top of that and i think he did an excellent job Frames always seem to have like a really rough finish to it, a coarse kind of like shape, kind of like, you know, bumpy. No matter what you do, it's going to be like that. That's the way it is. But every component going back onto this thing looks really, really good. So getting the leaf springs into place, it was a bit tricky. Lucky for us, we were two, and that was the whole purpose of me going over there that day. There was a lot of heavy lifting, and when you're trying to get bolts to go into the proper spot, when you're just one and you have a lot of leverage and a lot of distance on that piece of metal and it's pushing down on you, it's not so easy. So I was there to help him out. We got everything lined up, everything put in. At first we were a little bit worried about the way things would line up, but once everything was fastened down and locked in and torqued to exact spec that it should be, everything lined up beautiful. Everything just went into place. It was good and solid. No worries, no fears there. get into the axle on this thing now it's a Mazda pickup truck which is the equivalent of a Ford Ranger so the previous owner he would put a Crown Vic differential on it the advantage of that I assume is the Crown Vic differential is I think I'm pretty sure we're both pretty sure that it's actually an 8.8 .8. so that's a really strong differential that can take all kinds of power and there's an endless number of ring and pinion gears for it, different options, different LSD setups, drag spools, you name it, you can get it for that. It's very well known, it's very common, and that could come in handy for them down the road. But the big problem with it was the person that put it on before probably didn't have it lined up so well. So we had to cut off all the brackets for the suspension and redo them. 
as well as the location of where the axle sits on the leaf springs and the shocks because the shocks were mounted so crazy that they probably weren't even functioning properly. We had to get it all into position, figure out what it was gonna be before Steve actually tack welded all the brackets into place. We had to lift the truck up a little higher. It might've been a little sketchy the way we were doing it, but it worked out. We're all safe and sound, no problems there. But uh, we got it in and figured out exactly where it was gonna be using the same techniques that I used on the El Camino actually to line up the differential and the transmission, make sure everything's on the same pitch so that way your universal joints are good traveling from your drive shaft, right? So we got that all lined up, we found the proper angles, put it into place, tacked it in. Fortunately, we had just enough welding wire to get that tacked in. Right after it was done, he ran out, so he's gonna have to take it all out and solidify the welds and everything anyway, along with doing the other shock mounts. Last but not least, we ran into a little bit of an issue with the drive shaft because he's changing from a drive shaft with a hanger bearing. So it's got a universal joint set up in the middle and it kind of works like that. He got a full aluminum, a really long drive shaft, which should be nice and strong and tough. Goes along really good with the 8.8 .8 rear end. The problem with that was the yoke had an extra balancer bit on there. And that actually threw a wrench in our gears because we couldn't get the drive shaft to fit on properly. It was a little too long. So we had to use the yoke off the original drive shaft but the universal joints became an issue because of the size of everything. So he's gonna have to look for a solution to that. But we're gonna get to see in the very near future what these parts look like on the road. Already seeing a truck back together is pretty cool with all the parts nice and clean, fresh looking, brand new. He's got new bushings, new bearings, new all kinds of stuff on this truck. So it's definitely gonna be cool. So stick around. We're gonna get more into that thing, get it on the road. As soon as it's ready to be uh, driven and stuff like that, we're gonna get to work on the bodywork. That's gonna be a whole other section of this deal, so hit the subscribe button. Enjoy the ride. If you can't fix what's